Hey, hi, boys and girls. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of a comparison. Uh, you've already heard us talk a little bit about uh, the heating and cooling system that we've got here on the Tesla Model Y. Today what we're going to do is going to compare this. We're going to compare the, the Model Y heating and cooling system to what we found on the Mach-E. And I think you're going to be surprised by the differences that we've found. Today as well, we're going to have uh, Corey Steuben, our president, and Ben Lindemood, who's uh, in charge of the, uh, the uh, teardown here on the, on the Mach-E. They're going to be doing most of the talking because, quite frankly, um, this is a really complicated system, and I don't want to bugger it up. So I'm going to start off with uh, Corey, and he's going to start talking a little bit about what we found here uh, on the Tesla. And then as he's talking, Ben is going to be showing you the corresponding componentry and whatnot that's associated with, uh, with the Mach-E. So with that, Corey, it's all yours. I'm going to get out of the way. Now the first thing I want people to notice here is location, location, location. Many of the components for the Tesla Model Y are very close together. What Ben is going to do is he's going to bring the corresponding pieces and parts that we found on the Mach-E, put them on the table, and then compare and contrast the hoses and lines that run between them. Right here, is the R1234YF pump. Notice it's hanging off of this cross car bracket from the Tesla Model Y. Tesla chose a steel bracket to go across, Ford chose an aluminum. But as we look at how things are mounted, how they're isolated and the distances apart, we can see that Tesla focused heavily on getting everything as close together as possible. If you look at the back, because this is a heat pump system, the lines run in an exact straight line. Um, when comparing and contrasting to the Ford Mustang Mach-E, you'll notice that the lines are not nearly as concise. So Ben, do you wanna go ahead and grab the first component to compare and we can talk through the differences? All right, well first we're gonna grab all the lines that the Mach-E has, which is, as you can see, a whole bunch of lines when compared to what the Tesla Model Y had. There's actually 35 different hoses here, uh, which is a very large number uh, when looking at the thermal system. And then pulling out a few of the other parts that Corey had just talked about, we'll start with the bracket uh, that they're using for mounting most of this. This is the cross car beam. This also uh, holds the motor up as well as the electronics. So Ford is doing more than just, uh, just the thermal systems with this component. So it is much larger than what it needs to be, but it would be the equivalent part in the Mach-E. And then we also have the compressor that the Mach-E is using, but there isn't, it's not mounted just like that. There is a, a noise isolating diaper that goes around it and they have to a bracket and then an isolator to hold it in place. So there's a lot more that's happening with these parts. And then Corey also mentioned the, um, the refrigerant lines there and how they were very straight and uh, uh, to the point with their design. These are very turned, uh, very, uh, they're very bent, not a straight line ran here, so it, they have to wrap around parts to get to where they need to be. So, uh, Corey, if you want to take a look at some of the next parts. Yeah, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the valves and the ethylene glycol system. So we have one bottle here. The Ford Mach-E has multiple bottles. The valve, the octo valve, which we've covered at length in previous videos, we may pop up a little video how that works. Um, that quarterbacks the fluid through the systems. So rather than having a disassociated valve and disassociated pumps, the pumps and the valves are all right here. We've reassembled the system to give uh, the viewers a sense of how close the items are packaged together. And you can see one motor, one motor, one valve, all within a few inches of each other. And the bottle is connected to the, uh, the, the nylon uh, manifold that that flows all the fluid throughout. Another item that we're gonna talk about as I spin this around is the liquid cooled condenser and the chiller. The chiller on the Ford Mustang Mach-E is located on the right rail. Uh, ben can pull that part out and we'll show uh, how that chiller is mounted. This chiller is mounted directly to the semi-solid forging um, 
this allows for zero lines between the R1234YF system and zero lines from the ethylene glycol system. So Ben, can you pop up that, uh, the chiller? We will grab the chiller next. We have the chiller and then of course, they need a mounting bracket to be able to put that uh, to the right rail. And then a few of the other components that Corey had just gone over. There are, there are two bottles uh, reservoirs on the Maki. -E. There are two coolant loops that they are using, so they need to supply both of them. Uh, they are the same part, so they did get some, uh, some commonality out of it. Uh, but they have a coolant loop for their battery that runs through their PTC and then the, um, the heater, the, in, uh, the cabin heater. And then their other loop runs through their electronics and motors. And because of that, they need to have multiple pumps in their system. Uh, they have a total of four pumps. Here are two of them and their corresponding brackets. And then again, uh, there are two loops, two more pumps for the second loop. Uh, because they have so much hose, they need to have more pressure to pump them through the system. And then they have valves as well because they are changing how their coolant is run depending on how uh, what conditions the vehicle is being ran in. They have a four-way valve and a, and a two-way valve that they use. Plus brackets. And then again, as Sandy said, more brackets. And some more brackets there on the table back here. So they have brackets that are uh, holding all of their parts together. There's a lot of fasteners that go with each of these brackets as well. So there's a lot of assembly time to put this all together. Yeah. Sandy's initial reaction was genuine. I know we call this a nightmare that may have been a little bit of a stretch, but when, when we look at designs, we're not necessarily um, looking at just cost and weight, but we're looking at sometimes the elegance of how things are designed. Seeing these two pumps directly mounted to a manifold on the Tesla, seeing those four pumps mounted separately with their own brackets, sometimes two brackets, that causes us to think, what were those decisions that went in, um, that went into designing this? And Ben and Sandy, you can hit on the amount of, of hoses that, that we had on the Mach-E versus the amount of hoses that we had on the Tesla. Well, we've still got a couple more spare parts here that we have to kind of uh, uh, address uh, oh, yeah, we in have order, to, right, in um, order to make this uh, uh, compliant, I guess. Right, and one part that is on the uh, Model Y that Corey hasn't mentioned yet is the 12 volt battery. That's just where Tesla chose to, to place it. It doesn't have anything to do with the thermal system. We're just trying to show equivalency here. So we have a, a battery and a battery tray that went with it. And then we have the parts that are equivalent to the LCC the, and the heat pump that Tesla is using. We have the, you wanna grab that one? We have the PTC heater with two brackets for the PTC heater. And then we have the condenser uh, which is located at the front of the vehicle. <clears throat> this is the condenser. So we start looking at this, and, um, and you recall um, um, uh, when I was working with the, uh, the Chinese on their, on their products, um, I had a little rule. Every engineer, one gram every day. So we have a look at this, and we have a look at that, and we just start... <laughs> We, say, we decided we'd put down a little bit of, uh, of the, uh, a little bit of the size and weight associated with this design versus uh, what we have here at Tesla. So if we look at the Mach-E, the number of uh, pipes and whatnot, if you stretched them all out into one, you'd have 18.42 meters. That's quite a ways. If you look at the Model Y, you're looking at 6.35 meters. If you look at the number of hoses here on the Mach-E, you're looking at uh, 35 parts. Over there, you got 10. Okay, so we go back to grams. This, obviously, we're, we're not gonna put that into grams. You can add two zeros if you want, but at the end of the day, look at the weight just in the fluid, just in the fluid. 
Now, people have been talking about the batteries. Oh, we got a bigger battery, so we're gonna get longer range. You aren't gonna get range if you can't get rid of weight. Remember, I keep saying the same stuff over and over again. I, I, need, I need weight reduction. I need a coefficient of drag that's low. I need, I need to have really good friction characteristics. And I need efficiency when it comes to wiring and, and plumbing. This is where things start to fall apart on the Mach-E. But bear in mind, this is the second best product that we've looked at. That's ponderous, isn't it? This is better than everything else that we've seen apart from Tesla. This is better than everybody else. So here's the deal. Um, everybody that's in the industry has really got to start looking hard at what's the competition doing, what are we doing, and how are we going to be effective in the future. This is a good example of how much of a difference there is between uh, the Mach-E, the, uh, the Tesla Model Y, and then try and picture what it would look like if we had something from somebody else which is even more dramatically different than what this is. Really and truly, if we're gonna make a success in the EV world, every engineer, one gram every day. And in this case, one kilogram. Anyway, that's I think our, our wrap up. But, uh, but at the end of the day, we're really, really happy. I don't know, is there anything else we need to discuss here? I ben? think we're good, Sandy. Corey, mm -hmm. we're good. Okay, so again, thanks very much for watching. Um, being as Corey's here, um, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll make him smile. Go ahead, try that out. Yeah, see, there you go. And uh, we'll have more for you uh, in the coming weeks with um, all of what's going on here. For those of you who are looking at uh, buying our reports, um, they're gonna be coming uh, relatively soon. We're working as quickly as we can to make sure that those reports get out, the costing and the weight and all that other stuff. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Thank you again from Monroe Live. Yeah.